What's up guys, Doom Week here and welcome back to another Modern Horizons 3 video and today we're going to be taking a look at a reprint as you can see on your screen which is Victimize. Before we continue, I just wanted to say big thank you to all of the new followers, subscribers of the channel. If you're enjoying the content, please be sure to like, subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments section down below. And uh, we're going to be coming out with some more discussion videos. There were some good responses to the discussion videos that we have uploaded uh, in you know the past week, maybe two weeks. So I'm going to try to lean into that a little bit more. So if you guys have any ideas for anything you'd like me to talk about or any sort of, you know, if it's modern or pioneer related or anything like that, would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now, with all of that said, let's talk about Victimize. So inherently, this card is extremely powerful. For three mana, you get to return two creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. The downside is you need something to sacrifice. Well, what if I told you there were good creatures to sacrifice that also happen to be blue for reasons that we will get to in a second. So Hedron Crab and Falaji Archaeologist, both very good cards at enabling and milling yourself. So Hedron Crab, fetch land, mill six, Falaji Archaeologist, mills three, but you also get to hit a reanimation spell off of the Falaji. So Falaji, mill a creature, hit a reanimation spell, good to go. The reanimation spells, let's talk about those real quick. So Victimize. Three mana, choose two target creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature. If you do, return those cards to the battlefield tapped. Two things to work two things worth noting here with victimize. The first one, you need two targets. So if you only have one large creature in your graveyard, you may have to target a smaller creature, or maybe you want to wait a little bit and see if you can mill over another big creature. Persist, that one you're probably used to by now. This is just two mana return a non-legendary creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. As far as what we are getting back with these cards, non-legendary being the key word here, so Archon of Cruelty, this is, you know, pound for pound, the best reanimation target people play in Reanimator, Creativity, it's even played in Legacy in uh, in small doses, so this is, you know, by far our best reanimation target, but because we have eight total reanimation spells, we kind of want more than just four, and that's where Sarah's Emissary and Terastodon come into play. So Emissary is a 7-7 flyer, it's an ETB as you choose a card type, and you and all of your stuff have protection from that card type, so, you know, against Galvanic Discharge, you name Instant, maybe against, against like, Fairy Time Raveler, you name Planeswalkers, sometimes you'll even name, like, lands against the Amulet deck so they can't Valakut you, so, you know, it's, it is really good against a lot of different strategies. The first copy does not necessarily lock anybody out, but usually the second one will lock most people out. And then one Terastodon, just because it's slightly better than the third Emissary, and it's really good against Tron. Blows up some lands, give them the 3-3s, three but if you're blowing up two Tron lands, you don't really care about giving them two 3-3s. Three so we talked about the creatures that self-mill. Just really quick, just want to go over, we have a couple more ways to discard. So Tainted Indulgence and Psychic Frog, both of which are very good discard outlets if you happen to draw the large creatures. And specifically in the case of Psychic Frog, you'll, you'll notice that Psychic Frog, Hedron Crab, and Falaji Archaeologist are all blue. So there's a very powerful angle with, of this deck where because your uh, most of your enablers, actually all of them to be precise, are blue creatures, the Crab, Archaeologist, Frog, you actually get to enable Flare of Denial relatively easily. And what's nice about that is, as you know, if you utilize your Crab or your Archaeologist to mill over a creature, you don't really care about sacrificing it to Flare. So it gives you some really like powerful nut draws where you can go, say, turn one, Heatron Crab, turn two, fetch land, mill over a creature, persist with Flare of the Nile backup. And that's really hard for a lot of decks to beat. And then the, the other interactive spell here we're playing is Thoughtseize, just a very good catch-all. And in a pinch, you can Thoughtseize yourself. Real quick here in the mana base, just want to highlight this. We're playing two Undercity Sewers because we are trying to put cards into our graveyard. So if you ever, you know, get if you ever hit the jackpot and go play uh, get Undercity Sewers and mill over an Archon of Cruelty, pretty powerful. Similar to like the Gorio's Vengeance decks. And then also we do have two copies of Cephalid Colosseum. Again, more ways to be able to draw and discard the, the large creatures out of our hand. As far as the sideboard is concerned, because we're only a two-color deck, we can play a bunch of Harbingers against the Tron decks. Toxic Deluge, very good against Boros and any deck trying to go wide. Dothy Voidwalker for living in another graveyard decks. Subtlety for Nadu. And then two Consigns and a Necromentia. Consigned mostly here for Tron, and then Necromentia good against basically any combo deck. 
So that's pretty much it for the deck list. I was actually pretty impressed by what was going on here. Just for clarity's sake, this was a list that I found from one of the top 16s of the of recent Moto Challenge. User, I believe, was Diamond Atog, so shout out to Diamond Atog for the list. I had a lot of fun playing it, and uh, I think you guys are going to like this video. So without further ado, I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. That riff is so sick, by the way. That little, like, it's such a good riff. Phil Meyer. I think I'm supposed to play Sewers on one. Yeah. Is there any reason to keep that when I already have two Victimize? I guess the reason would be if I don't find my third land. But I think I'd rather Graveyard it to find my third land, if that makes sense. I guess also if I only hit one creature, that could be bad. Champion of the Bearish. Yeah, that's a good name for it. I do like this card quite a bit. It is a really good song. So we probably lead with Falaji first because it's more mana efficient. It does look at less cards, but... <laughs> okay, well, you know. Oh no, I missed on Falaji. How unfortunate. Man, that really sucks, doesn't it? Oh well, I guess. Oh wait, I thought Victimize was... Oh, I thought this was Sack as an additional cost. Uh, well, in that case, in that case, we're doing this. I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was sack as an additional cost. That would be very good. It would be a lot better for sure. Uh, I'm gonna fetch. I know they're just gonna end up killing my crab anyways, but I, I don't want to mill the the island. All right, Chad, it's time. Kennedy grapes. Yeah, we can find a flare off this. That'd be nice. Or not. Oh, they're gonna... Oh my god, they're gonna Bogart Trawler me, aren't they? They're definitely gonna Bogart Trawler me, aren't they? Hey. Got any flares? Nope. No flares. Oh yeah, you know for a fact they're gonna have the Trawler. I kinda have to play into it if I'm gonna set up Victimize next turn, and it sucks, but they already played two. No, these are not trawlers. These are fell the profanes. Why do they have to think about that? <laughs> tank, 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 best possible. Bruh. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's okay. We're going to mill over two more archons. Mm. Or not. That's good enough, right? I think it's good enough. Hot Girls, thank you for the 10 month resub. Meow mix, meow mix, please deliver. Got any Archons? No, I don't have any glue. All right, give me a flare off of this. Flare would go crazy. Okay, that's the second time I've missed. It's unfortunate. I could draw a flare off this. Get this trawler out of here, by the way. Flare me. Flare my ass, please. Can I please have one flare? <laughs> not not quite. Not exactly. Not not exactly. Maybe I'm just farming Huzz. Okay. That's fine-ish. I mean, I could just go Tainted Indulgence, Discard, Archon, and then get two more, right? Yeah, we're just going to victimize both Archons back. Depending on how deep they go and how much life they gain, we might be able to kill them next turn. They they definitely went deep. How many flares have I milled, by the way? Because I want to find a flare next turn. I've only milled one. It's, like, not that unlikely for me to find one off of draw step, two, indul two from Indulgence, and two from the Archons. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see five cards next turn. I assume if I find a flare, they just die. I'll be casting Archon this game. They're probably going to lose before I cast Archon. I would guess. All right. March for seven, which is 14. Plus the land is 15. Okay, so they're only going to take six from the Archon, which is not quite enough, but it's pretty close. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that Archon has uh, has text. Or Sorry, I forgot that Tainted Indulgence has text. 
<laughs> Whoops. Well, I found the flare, so that's good, right? It's fine. I I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like I, I think it's I think we're still just fine. Uh, I guess we'll get back frog. Sack. I don't think I need the crab anymore. Yield to this. I wouldn't mind finding a second flare. What I should have done was use the Colosseum. If I had gone Colosseum, then Victimize, then it would have been fine. I mean, like I said, I, I think we're still okay. They need, like, discard spell for the flare plus relevant card. Which, I don't know how likely it is they have that. Should keep crab so we can build them up when they draw a million cards. I don't know how relevant that is. Um, I assume I let this resolve because I want them to lose two life. Like, they're going to take the flare, obviously, but I want them to lose two life because that's two less cards from the Necro. It's bad if they have Shieldred. Well, what's nice about this, right? If they have Shieldred, they have to tap out, which means that we can still arc on them. Yeah, is that even... I don't know that I care about that because I can just go discard Archon to Frog. Yeah... And go discard Archon to Frog, discard Frog to Frog, then victimize both. How many Archons do I have left? Oh, they also have to kill this one, right? So it doesn't even matter. So if they kill this Archon, then I can just go discard the other one, then victimize them both back. I feel like we're still fine. And we have, we have two Flares left in a 17 card deck, so we're pretty likely to find Flare next turn. So they have to kill the Archon here, right? X equals 12. Okay. I think they're just dead. I guess they can soul spike me to go to 17. They might as well soul spike the frog. I mean, I'm going to save the frog, of course, but... How many spikes do they have left? They've gone through... They've only gone through one spike. And they've gone through one... Can we get a march count? One, two... So two marches, two spikes. Okay. <laughs> well, they're off it. Okay, cool. Here, here's the interesting thing. Now, to be fair, we don't have an answer to Leyline in our sideboard anyways, so it's, like, not really much of a discussion. But a lot of the mono black decks that I've seen lately are off Leyline, basically entirely. So we usually don't even have to prepare for Leyline. What is good against them? Consign hits the Necro Trigger for however relevant that is. Subtlety hits Shieldred, and then Harbinger shuts off... Phyrexian Tower. Like, all these cards have text, but they're not, like, they're not super great, you know? They have some applications, but not a ton. Yeah, even Necromench is pretty good against, like, just Necromench with their shield rids. I mean, I guess we could consider Harbinger against six basics. What would you cut, though? Like, is there is there anything that's bad? Not really anything that I want to cut. I think I want to keep the Thoughts Eases so I can take their Bogart Trawlers. 2-2 Two -two is fragile versus them. Yeah, like if they have, even if they have one Swamp and three MDFCs, they can just, they can even kill it for free with Soul Spike. Yeah, I don't think Harbinger's very good. Cut Crab. I think I'm just going to run it back. I could maybe see Shaving on Crabs for like maybe a couple subtleties. But then the other issue with Shaving on Crab is then you make your Victimizes a lot worse. Isn't Victimize bad? I mean, in a general sense or in this matchup specifically? Uh, this hand kind of stinks, right? I mean, it's got Frog Archon, but... <laughs> this is... I mean... I guess? Wait, hear me out. You're gonna think this is insane. I actually think I keep both creatures, because if they Grief Scan me, they have to take one of these. Does that make sense? Significantly worse? Yeah, but I'm already on six, you know? I actually thought about putting back the crab, but that line's really bad if they just don't cast the card grief. So, you know. Ah, oh, you're supposed to grief me. Come on. Yeah, we don't go to five on this channel. I mean, that helps. Should play this. That is a card. Actually, a, a pretty good card at that. Okay, Urborg. Well, now I don't feel bad about fetching an island. Give me a persist. How does he do it? Uh, I'm going to save the fetch in case we draw crab. How does he do it? 
See, the problem is they're going to cast Fatal Push, make me discard, and then untap and go Land Trawler. So I'm going to keep the Terastodon in hand. It's better against Land Trawler. Oh, that's another good reason to save the fetch, too, because I want to save the fetch for Threshold. After they Trawler me, of course. Yeah, I'll just draw another one. Ooh, interesting. Leads me to believe they probably don't have another land in hand. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I really, I really don't know what you want me to tell you. Magic is not a hard game, you know? It's it's pretty easy. You can't mull versus a scam deck. You'd have to draw the perfect four card the perfect card four turns in a row to win. I mean, that's just what happens against grief, you know? You have to draw well against grief. But I mean all you have to do is draw well. It's not that hard. Mm. Now, the question that's on your mind right now is, Streamer, is this deck better than Esper Gorios? Well, no, it's just different, you know? We're just trying some different stuff. But the answer to your question that I know you're... I know you have that question on your mind. The answer is no. Okay, I can work with this. What do you put back with this hand? I think it's either Thoughtseize or Frog, right? I was thinking about Swamp, but it's kind of greedy. I mean, Th Thoughtseize is the... Is the the safe, the quote-unquote safe play, right? Just go turn one crab, turn two frog, turn three victimize. Have the high roll? I don't. You just put back the Thoughtseize. Like, where am I casting Thoughtseize in this curve anyways? I'm not putting back Swamp. I'm putting back Thoughtseize. It's not happening. I see. I know how it is. I get it. And I respect it, you know? I respect it. All right. Crab me. Crab me. Just don't kill my crab, please. They're gonna think we're playing mill. Mm, okay, dismember. Patrick says, Doomwake, is this deck better than Esper Gorios? No. But I appreciate you asking. In the most sincere way possible. Okay, that is not a creature. Give me Archon of Cruelty, please. Oh. I mean... I guess all you have to do is ask for it. I should have attacked. Just please don't have Thought Knots here. Or have Thought Knots here but no temple. Dodged. Dodged. Untap. I would like to mill a second... Oh, oh you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. Attack with Frog first. Why did I attack with Frog first? I'm trying to find a second Archon. Did not find a second Archon. So I guess we just go... I guess we go Archon Falaji. Because I want a second blue creature in play. Why am I attacking first? Oh, because I see what you're saying. You want to attack first because I could draw an Archon off the frog. Okay, I see what you're saying. I gotcha. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You are correct. Because then if I draw Archon off Frog, I can just discard it and then victimize two Archons. I gotcha. It's also better to wait till post-combat anyways, since, like, if I have to Flare for some reason, then I want to be able to attack with the Frog. Like, if, if they do something that makes me cast Flare, like Endurance, I don't know. Oh. Well, they definitely could have Gozlex Command. It's probably what they're doing, right? I mean, thankfully we drew the Flare, but this is what I'm getting punished for, right? Because now they can Kozlex command the Archon. I have to flare. Now and then I have to lose the frog. Yeah. I mean, we have an answer, so it's not a huge deal, but. Now I have to lose the frog, which sucks. Uh, I guess we'll do the Archon first. It's okay. I'll just find second flare. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. See, it's actually unfortunate that I build the flare. Because I didn't want them to know that I had it. You know? Now they know. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> don't play that shit with me. Don't even think about it. Now we can just hard cast this one. And they don't know about this one, so. I don't have another Archon, right? 
Speaking of Fletcher's Johnson, did you guys know that Fletcher made the uh, the finals of the Legacy Energy? Which is kind of dope. In classic Fletcher fashion. Painless Quill, thank you for the four months. And MTGO Assassin, thank you for the three months. Thank you guys for the resubs. I appreciate that. Terrasted on time. I could Terrasted on them, but I kind of want to hold up Flare. I mean, how do I lose if I Terrasted on them, right? But also, how do I lose if I hold up Flare? I don't know if there's a way that I lose no matter what I do. Terrasted would have been cooler, though, right? Yeah, I mean, Terrasted would have been cooler for sure. I could do it now. It's fine. Might as well do it now. Boop, boop, boop. See ya. Maybe we should play more Terrastodons. That's what I'm saying. All right. Harbinger. Consign. Subtlety does not seem very good against the Eldrazi deck. Like, you Subtlety there. Well, I don't know. I guess against this version, it's probably not good because they're more in on non creature spells, right? Like, through the Breach and the One Ring. I guess it is good against Thought Not Seer. But again, this is a situation where I just don't know what to cut. Yeah, Necromancer gets through the breach, but we have to cut six cards, though. I wonder if the first cut is like Tainted Indulgence or something. See, this is the problem when you build a deck that is a that is just too good, is you never, ever want to sideboard. Yeah, we could shave on Thoughties, I guess. We could shave one Victimize. Victimize is kind of slow on the draw. Could do like one, two Indulgence, two Thoughties. Because we are bringing in more interaction. We're basically swapping two Thoughties for two Consign, and then we're shaving two Indulgence, one Victimize for three three drops, which I think makes sense. I like that. Is that a Chalice deck? Usually, yes. But we still have the Consigns for Chalices. And, like, honestly, once we play Crab on turn one, we don't care too, too much about Thoughtsy or uh, Chalice. I guess that's a reason to cut more Thoughtsies, as maybe. I'm on the draw, you say? I'm on the draw, you say? All right, if you're squeamish, I need you to look away right now. How bad would Chancellor of the Annex be? Uh, probably not very good, right? Yeah, my justification is that I've already mulliganed once. I don't want to mulligan twice. Who does that? Only Scrubs mulligan twice. Not me, though. Definitely not me. I mean, even if I don't draw a land, I, I can't afford to go to discard. I've mulliganed. If it was a seven card hand, maybe, but not on six. You just have to believe in... Believe that you will draw a land. Inshallah. They revealed Embrical. I mean, that could also mean that they have... Um, that could mean they have the, uh, the land too, right? They could just have Labyrinth. Oh, please don't try to sphere me. Please don't guess Tritosphere. Come on, you wouldn't do that to you wouldn't do that to a homie, would you? You wouldn't play Tritosphere, would you? There's no way. Right. <laughs> I drew the land too. This would have been a lot better if they didn't have Tritosphere. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. This would have been a lot better if they did not have Tritosphere. Blank stirrings with Tritosphere. Yeah, well, I mean, you use the stirrings to find the Tritosphere, right? It just makes sense. It's five head. I mean, if I draw an island or a fetch land that finds island, I think I'm still a favorite to win this game. How about we draw a three meta card? Is that good enough? Oh, yeah, I should have attacked with the crab, my bad. You're right, you're right, you're right. That is a good point. They're all three mana cards. <laughs> when, you, when you put it that way. No. Now my Harbinger's bad. Yeah, um, actually, all of our cards are three mana cards. Good, I wanted to mill myself anyways. Uh, Surely it has to be Harbinger, right? There's just no way it's not Harbinger. Like, I can victimize Archon... Actually, wait, I can victimize Archon plus Harbinger, right? That sounds really good. Let's do that. <laughs> that sounds good. I like that. I know we don't get anything off of the uh, the Archon trigger, but, you know. Victimize is dope. What a sick card, huh? Now we just need to find a Flare, which we milled over two of them, so we only have two left. 
But I if I hold if I draw flare, I'm just gonna hold up hard cast flare. Mm, okay, that's red mana for breach. Diamond Atog. Here's the here's the original list from the challenge. Yeah, Diamond Atog. I think I changed one card. I cut the main deck Harbinger for a 21st land. It's the only thing that I changed. Okay, what could they have if I attack with Harbinger? Nothing, right? Because they have to sack the Scion the spawn anyways. Really need to find a Flare, though. Because I presume they probably have Breach in hand. But there's not a lot I can do about them having Breach. Is there a world where I can beat a Breach? I doubt it. Especially against the Tal against the uh, Tritosphere. Um, What's in the Graveyard? Hedron Crab. I guess we can play second Harbinger to play around Dismember or something. What does land accomplish, though? Land doesn't do anything, right? You just beat Breach. How do I beat Breach? Oh, you're saying if they have Breach Embercle, I just keep the Archon. Sure, 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 sure. I'm saying if they have, like, if they have Breach Ulamog, then I die. But we can beat Breach Embercle, yes. I guess I play Frog, because then we can put more Archons in the graveyard if that matters. So this beats, beats Breach Embercle, but not Breach Ulamog. Yeah. But there's not really anything I can do about Breach Ulamog. You don't know what the text on MH3 Ulamog is? Well, you're about to find out. It's, uh, what, 22, 22, I think? No, 23, 23? Because it's base 8, 8, correct? 7, 7? So it's 22 then, right? It's 22. Is Emrakul in exile? Yeah, it's right here. They exiled the Emrakul to the Labyrinth on turn 2. Okay, well, they didn't have it. Cool. <laughs> Sick. Does it rhyme with Schmuel, Schmuff, Schmink? Yes. That is exactly what it rhymes with. I mean, I'm going to keep this in. Now, here's the question. Are we good gamers? Because I have been told that when you play a reanimator deck, you are required by law to always mill your large creature off of your surveil land. It's actually part of the contract that you sign up when you're, when you're like, when you go to play the reanimator deck. There's a contract you have to sign. Is that good? Uh, I think the answer is yes. So it looks weird, but hear me out. We can go turn two frog. If they play a relevant card, we can go discard Archon, flare, sack frog, and then turn three persist. So I think it is good. I guess it's not as good if they have like a discard spell for persist. My hand is like weirdly good against Thoughtseize though. Okay, that's fine. And now we can even go for... Excuse me, we can even go for Reanimate plus counter backup on turn three. Which is nice. I doubt there's anything we would need to counter this turn with Flare, but we could if we needed to. No blocks. So they have to have, like, double counter spell here. I guess in turn... Ooh... Well, that's pretty good. I'm going to lead with that. That's really good, actually. Because now I can just sack that to the uh, to the flare. So let's go here. Um, I guess we should go to... Combat? Attack with Froge. See if they do anything. Might as well discard the Archon, because we know we're discarding that anyways. We'll pass priority. <laughs> <laughs> the look of dread in my opponent's face when I discarded Archon. They're probably not happy about that. Isla. Man, having being able to go persist with counter backup on turn... Well, I mean, this is turn three, but I don't know. It just feels really good. Mm. You got a force for me? No? Okay, good luck. Good luck. All right, you're off it. All right, what do we want against Blue Red Wizards? Esper Gorio can't run Flare? Yeah, I guess that is. So people people were asking earlier about, like, what's the advantages of playing this over Esper Gorios? That is certainly an advantage. Flare of Denial is a messed up card. And having, like, getting to play Flare with your blue mill enablers is kind of, it, it does feel very, very good, which I like. Do I want any of these cards against blue-red? Maybe Dothy? 
because Dothi is kind of reasonable against Murktide. Subtlety is also fine against Murktide. I could also just not sideboard. Like, nothing feels really bad against them. I could see, you know what, actually? I could see going like this, maybe. Let's try this. Dothi is nice if they have, like, if they're heavy on graveyard hate post board. Yeah. Archonic Cruelty also good against Murktide. That is, that is accurate. That's how that works. Unless they sack Tamiya. It's not as good, right? Close, but not quite. This is worse. Much, much worse. Okay, I accept. Um, probably like this, right? Keep old fetches. Are there any blue creatures that could be played over the Tainted Indulgences? Um, the only other one that I could really think of off the... There's two. Minister of Inquiries. And what's the other one? The Adventure. What's the Adventure one? Minister of Inquiries. And I forget the name of the Adventure one. It's one mana 04 and then one mana target player mills four. The problem with that card is it's like it is a two mana play. Yeah, Secret Keeper. So, like, Secret Keeper and Minister of Inquiries, but those cards are both really bad. Minister is probably the more playable of the two, but I think they both kind of just suck. I would say that I'm enjoying Modern, but I don't play against Nadu. I think for the most part. Interesting. Did we go mana efficiency? No, I think we go crap here. I'm going to get the Surveil land here because I want to find land three. And I also want to fetch main phase. So they can't kill my crab in response. Mill before the Surveil. Graveyard that. So land three or persist would be nice. It's bad if they have like a hearse or something. <sighs> Wait, how many types do we have in our graveyard? One, zero, seven, Two, eight. This is just draw two. I still kind of don't want to main phase it though, because they clearly have counter spell up. So I think I'd rather just like pass if they're not doing anything, hold up the indulgence, and then go like end of their turn indulgence, untap frog, and maybe try to overload counter spells that way. Sure. I'm still going to hold the indulgence now. I actually, I kind of want them to counter this, I think. Yeah, maybe I don't. Okay. Manic Scribe. Two mana, 03. When it enters the battlefield, that sucks. All right, we need to find a flare. Well, we're dead. <laughs> it's really hard to beat that card. I guess we can frog. Um, I mean, I don't want to mill them, but, like, what else am I going to do, right? <laughs> All right, mill you, I guess. This is what we call plan B. We're just a mill deck in disguise. Yeah, the frog does kind of keep the hearse in check, which is nice. And it's not clear they have a good out to the frog. Targeting Emissary Archon. One, two, three. I guess I should be keeping keeping a future indulgences in mind. But game three just cut the random rested on and Sir and play Doffies. Yeah, I'm gonna bring in the extra Doffy. I boarded in two, but not the third copy. Maybe we should just have four Dothies in the sideboard against stuff like this. Is there a reason why you didn't mill yourself? Well, they have this. I don't think there's a point in milling myself now. Like, there is a somewhat reasonable chance that we could just, like, mill them out, I guess. I don't know if it's very likely, but their deck draws a lot of cards, so... Like, at what point did we just shove on this frog? Could just be now. I mean, I'm going to go to combat. I think if they block, I'm at least going to discard two. I guess we could find ourselves in a bit of an awkward situation against Flame of Anor. It deals five. We can discard four. They have, like, Flame plus Bolt. It's bad. Uh, this one's irrelevant. I'm at least going to do this. We'll see if they want to respond. If they Flame now, I have to discard everything else, right? Yeah, if they Flame now, I have to go all in which I will do. I don't want to, but, you know, against the, against an active hearse, I do what I gotta do. I can only do so much. I think I'm gonna hold everything in hand for now. 
Like, I know I could play the Falaji, but what happens if I miss? Also, if I cast Falaji, they can respond to the trigger. I guess then I could still, like, if they flame in response, but I can just discard two to make it an X6. I'm going to hold. I could, like, play the Colosseum, build them for three, and then make them draw three. I don't know. It's just so unlikely to, to matter, right? No, I think I want to keep the lands in hand. I think. Voidwalker Emissary. Alright, one, two, three. That is the nice thing about the hearse. Like, it is good graveyard heat, but they're never going to be able to attack with it because the frog's going to be able to keep it in check. Although, once they start targeting their own graveyard, that's different. Is the most probable thing to mill them out completely, or are you having more than two randomator targets in a second randomator spell? Well, it's just the problem is at this point, because the Hurst is eating two a turn, it's just so unlikely for that to, to, to materialize. Because we need to have like three, I guess two, no, three, right? We need to have three targets, target two of them, they Hurst, and you know what I mean? It's like, it, that is very unlikely to happen. <laughs> the question is, do we just shove now? Just deal them seven? <laughs> Honestly? I mean, I'm in, you know. I'm in. They discarded their uh, their Odawara's mill too, so they may not even have that as an uh, as an option. All in, baby. Surely they don't play two Odawaras, right? There's no way they play two Odawaras. Give me a flare. Um, I guess I should cast that to. Okay, options. Cast that to try and find a flare. The problem is, if I miss, it's only 8 toughness, right? So they could have, like, flame plus bolt. Oh, or I could just miss on the Falaji. That is also a problem, isn't it? <laughs> well, now we lose the flame plus bolt, so... Let's hope they don't have that. Yeah, casting it was probably a little too greedy. I mean, it is, like, kind of appealing to try and hit... Maybe just kind of appealing to try and hit the, um... Hit the flare though, right? How many flares do we have left? We still have all four flares in the deck. No, Hearst does not stop Falashi. It's it's the same thing as like it says you're mill you're you're choosing a card from among those cards. So they can't like they can't hearse the cards that you see off Falashi. Alright, well, I mean we're combat. So is their hand just all counter spells? Alright, fine, I guess I'll hold. What did we learn? We learned that Psychic Frog is a really messed up card. That's what I've learned. Mark Dead kind of fucks. Not really. The frog kind of the frog can outsize Murktad, right? I think now that I have an extra card in hand, I can play the Falaji. Sure. I guess I should have expected that to happen, right? What else they what else they have in hand if they're not casting anything? Frog clears, man. They targeted Crab Falaji. The thing was reversed back. Wait, what? So they reversed it and then re-reversed it? There's no way, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, Jose. Say it ain't so. Two on the bottom. So they found a Murktide. Seven, eight. Ooh, they can hearse themselves. Mm. You think they see it? They probably do see it, right? What's funny is that if I had a target for victimizing my graveyard, I could bait the hearse and then attack. Yeah, I got really punished for casting that Falashi that one turn. <laughs> the turn that they, uh, the turn they count last turn, but they countered it. Yeah, they would just let it go at that point. I mean, I guess we're going to cast Dothy. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're in a spot where they maybe can't attack with the Merc Tide. We just pass. Yeah, I got, I got punished so hard for casting that, uh, Falashi last turn. That was a huge punishment. You'd be an 8-9. Um, no, I'm saying if I discard both, I would be a 9-10, but they can make theirs a 10-10. Yeah, see, they figured it out. They figured it out. They still can't really attack, right? Now they can attack. They don't. Interesting. Okay. I mean, we have time. I don't know what we're really looking for. I guess that. I could try to make this one bigger. They're probably just going to counter it. I mean, I think we're definitely in a bad spot, for sure. God, just like if I didn't, if I didn't cast that one Falaji that one turn, I think I probably would have won this game. Because then I would have had a ten, and they would have had the chump block. Yeah, this is game two. I'm up a game. Uh, sure. 
You already have two energy anyways. No. We don't even have an Odawara, I think, right? Or wait, am I playing an Odawara on this deck? I don't remember. Look at the deck list. Yeah, no Odawara. Takanuma instead, but no Odawara. Borrower would be kind of nice here, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know how we get out of this. I think we're just kind of, like, pointlessly playing this game for no reason. Like, they're just never going to attack. Eventually get to a spot where I have to chump block, and then I'm just going to die anyways. Yeah, I just don't have any outs. Ah, so close. So close. There was a reason to cast Falaji. The reason was to try and hit Flare, which, to my, in my, to my defense, in my, you know, to my credit, in my defense... We still had four copies of Flare in our deck at that point, so if the if the Falaji resolved, we were sort of likely to hit it at that point, but I just cut all the emissaries, maybe. Keep the Terrastin on. You think it's signed for hers? Is that not too narrow? You could play subtlety instead. What do you want to not play the victimizes? We can go to two victimize, I guess, play two subtleties. Something like that's probably okay. Just, like, really lean a lot less in on the reanimation stuff. Especially these three mana ones. These are a lot worse. Because they're a lot more conditional. I think I'm down with that. Yeah, that is another downside of playing, like, this specific version. This hand's really good. That is another downside to playing this specific version over something like Esper Gorios, where the Esper deck gets to play... Um, the Esper deck gets to play stuff like Prismatic Ending, Wrath of the Skies, all that. And when you're a blue-black deck, it's much harder to beat a resolve like Unlicensed Hearse or Leyline of the Void or something like that. Alright, please know me and Archon. <sighs> this game is so easy. Why? You know, I don't, I don't understand, man. How is this game so easy? I don't get it. Magic is the easiest game in the world. <laughs> this is turn two, by the way. This is when they cast Hearst next turn. See, it's draws like this where you, you really see like the, the upsides of playing the, the crabs and the flares. Like this draw is just so hard for basically any deck to beat. It could double bolt me, I guess. Preordain. Teferi with Victimize seems pretty sweet. Teferi with Victimize. Oh, just so you like they like can't respond to I see what you're saying, so they can't respond to your victimize. I mean you can also just have a second creature in play, right? That's another way around it. So how about uh can I interest you in two basic islands and a Dothy Voidwalker? What do you think about that? Just take discharge, right? Because taking this is better if they draw tune, and it doesn't matter if they draw a second bolt. Because no matter which one of these I take, they, they still die to second bolt. So this is better if they draw tune. I don't even know if they play tune, but they might. Oh, end step victimize. I see what you're saying. I gotcha, I gotcha. I mean, if they draw another red card, they could win. You don't really have a lot left. Tamio doesn't do it because they have to chump block. Same thing with Murktide. It has to specifically be a second bolt or a discharge. All right, well, that was easy. <laughs> All right, Chad, is the sand good? It's close, right? Turn one, Thoughtseize. Turn two, Frog. And we have the Victimize. So the issue with this hand is you cannot cast Victimize unless you have two targets. So this hand kind of needs to find either... Like, it really needs to find a Falaji, a Crab, or, like, back-to-back -back large creatures, which seems pretty unlikely, right? I don't know. The upside is extremely high. I'm going to keep it. Just, like, Thoughtseize into Frog on the play is really good. It's hard to pass that up, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, given that our plan is Frog, I guess I have to take that. Now, to be fair, our last Blue Road opponent got completely soloed by Frog, so let's hope this one also gets soloed. They might as well cast the Bolt here, right? Or, no, it depends, because if they're trying to save up... If they're trying to wait till they find a second Bolt, then they shouldn't cast the first one here. Question is, if they bolt, what do I discard? I think it's Victimized Coliseum. And then I can keep... Well, I guess do I need double black? No. I guess it's these two. And then next turn, I can go attack and hold up land hardcast flare. I think I like that. Okay, my 3-4 will take 3 damage. 
Nadu is super fashionable. Nadu does this little turn of the cab walk, draws attention twice per turn. Yeah. I mean, th the piece of art, like the the alternate artwork on the alternate art version of Nadu is like, it is a really good piece of artwork, you know? Like, the art is nice. I will give it that. All right. Flare me. Do you think there is space for the one ring index like this in Goryeo's? Hmm potentially i think it's a lot better in a deck like goryeo's where the one ring is very very good when you have a bunch of cheap interaction right and the cheap interaction in the goryeo's deck being just like a bunch of griefs and ephemerates so like when you get to go grief ephemerate your opponent and curve that into the one ring that is extremely powerful but in this deck where you don't have as much cheap interaction and it's more about like the cheap cards of the the self millers it's not as good in this deck i think I think I try and fight over this, right? So what's the worst case scenario? They played Basic Island. They didn't play Misty yet. So we know three of their cards are Misty Force Snap. If I hard cast, they can go Force Pitch other blue card. Then I can't replay the frog. Next turn, they can go Snap Snare. I feel like that's fine though, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna at least fight over it. Like I said, if they have a different blue card, they can just go force pitch that, keep the snap in hand. I mean, if they have to pitch the snap, it's much better for me. Or that. That also works. Now we can just fetch for the surveil land to try and spike for persist. This ended up being pretty good. I guess they can eventually snap sync. That could be their plan, is like set up snap sync. Okay, sewers. Uh, I'd like an Archon, please. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I'm, go I'm gonna try to put it into play. I don't know if it's very good, but I'm at least gonna try. What do I name? Instance? Probably? Yeah, I assume I name Instance, right? Because their only out at that point would be Odawara. Since they can't sink, they can't bolt, they can't do any of that stuff. So this gets forced, and then we cast a second one. Because they can also snap snare it. Name lands. I will name instant. Your turn. <laughs> Your turn. But a bit. We're we're doing a little bit of chatting. Opponent confirming that the frog is indeed busted. And I agree, the frog is frog is very good, especially in these matchups. Froge. Froge. Well, they did have it. <laughs> Funny enough, they did have it. Uh, they're still just dead to frog, though, right? Frog probably does bench a lot. How big is this now? Five? All right, six. I'll keep both flares just in case. Take six. How many cards have I discarded? A lot. The answer is a lot. That's that's the thing about blue red is all you have to do is resolve frog against them and just ride it to victory. You don't have to do much else. Okay, what did we do the last time? We cut the Terastodons, the emissaries, and two victimized. I think I like that. Kind of wish I had the fourth Dothy Voidwalker because then I would just cut the other two victimizes and bring in the third subtlety and the fourth Dothy and then only have persist. So that could be something to keep in mind is maybe cut the Necromentia for fourth Dothy. Did you ever play Psychotog in Legacy? No, but I've been told that this card is the, the I've been told this card is broken in Legacy. Sounds good, right? I mean, I'm not gonna bullet. It. It's a little weak to hearse, but <laughs> hear me out. They have no mountains. I mean, that is true. They would never ever play around Harbinger. That could be a, a game three tactic, maybe. Uh, does anybody see a problem? Does anybody see a problem with what's going on here? Yeah, me neither. No, we're good. Everything's fine. Okay, now it's fine. I guess I want to get a basic, just in case they boarded in their own moons. I can't imagine they would ever want, they would ever do that, but... I'll at least try it. I'm not sure why I'm fetching now, though. Because I'm not, I'm not casting Frog here. I'm, I'm holding up the Indulgence. Yeah, there's like no reason to mill now. Two Archons is kind of nice. All right, I'm just going to pass. Now, again, the problem is we can't really go for Victimize if they hold up a red mana. So if they counter our Indulgence and have a red up, we still can't 
really go for victimize. We probably lead Dothy at that point. I would like to find a Thoughtseize. I think I'm correct to fetch. Ooh. Well. Why can we go for it when they keep right up? So the way that victimize is worded is you cast the spell and you choose targets, right? They have a window to respond to kill your creature. So if they kill your creature in response, the rest of the spell does not resolve. That's the problem. So I think I'm going to go for persist. But I also think I want to... I don't know. We could wait a turn. What if I just shock in Watery Grave and play Dothy? Or also just like tap land hold up indulgence? Actually, you know what? I kind of like tap land hold up indulgence. I want to wait. I want to wait one more turn. If they're not doing anything... I guess waiting could be bad if they find... Waiting is bad if they find Hearse. They might also have Hearse and just be waiting to cast it. I kind of don't want them to counter it, though. I'm going to let that go, obviously. Worst case is they go land, Hearse, hold up, counter spell. That's probably worst case scenario. You have the card that gives next spell a split second. What is that card? Is that the is that the green one in Legacy, the quick reflexes? No, that's the protection spell. What's that card? If you had asked me for the Oracle text on Victimize, I would have told you it's part of the costs. <laughs> yeah, you would think, you know. Interesting. <laughs> Should I flare their discharge? The answer is no. Hmm. They didn't play a land. That's good. Well, us not drawing a land is kind of bad. I play Frog. They just counter it. Maybe I lead Doffy. No, I have two frogs anyways. And I don't want to discard hand size. Yeah, I mean, this would have been so good if I had drawn a land. Because then we just, we force the counter spell with frog and then go land persist. But now we're kind of in a tough spot. Not drawing a land there is pretty rough. Okay. They're still not drawing a land, which is good. We just need to find a land. Land me. Land me. Land my ass. Thank you. So, I guess we frog first, right? Yeah, we frog first. Because they're almost certainly going to counter this. And if they don't, then probably just pass and win with frog. Really? Okay. Go, I guess? I don't know. Your turn. I guess, what, they have stink into stupor? No, because if they had stink, they would have just played as a land. There's no way they'd be holding sync and not and missing land drops, right? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm going in. I guess the problem with going in is what if they just have second discharge, but, like, make them have it, right? Because we have to discard three, because they can go up to four energy. If we discard three, they just don't use any energy, and then they just go untap second discharge. They have seven, and then at that point, I can't save it, right? Well, I still technically could if I discard my entire hand. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. I want to make them... Okay, I think I've decided what I want to do. I want to make them fight over this. Because I think that there is a reasonable chance that they go untap second discharge, have two mana left over, then I can maybe bait the counter spell with Voidwalker... And then if they counter the Voidwalker, I guess we have to draw Black Source, because we only have two black in play, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, this would be a lot better if we had another Black Source. <laughs> well... They have six cards in hand. Alright, fine. You win this time. You win this time, Zero. I mean, it was pretty obvious they had second one, right? Yeah, what, Streamer, why don't you just flare it? Wait, I'm an idiot. This was so dumb. Why did I do this? I could have just went persist with flare up. I don't know why I didn't do that. As soon as I cast the Void Walker, I, I realized that play. As soon as I cast the Void Walker, I'm going to let this go. Like, the instant I put it on the stack, I just realized that. Which obviously would have been a lot better. When I just play land. Yeah. I realize that. I can do it now, so it's fine. 
So they need to have like they need to have like snare plus counter spell. Or that. Did not know that was a card in their deck. Yeah, we're not dead to this, but good enough. I don't know if I like the way I played that game. Game three. Although, if they had Surgical the whole time, I was probably cooked no matter what. Like, I, I was almost certainly never going to beat the Surgical. Because they were going to be able to hold up Surgical plus Counterspell the whole time. Uh, this hand... <laughs> well, if only. Alright, this hand's actually really good. I'm going to ship the sewers, I think. Yeah, ship the sewers. Kept seven. See how good their hand is. Bolt, Priority, and Snapcaster, Scolding. I mean, my hand it kind of entirely hinges around this card, so I think I have to take Scolding. Because they're, like, if they're worried about Frog, they're going to hold this card up on turn two, right? <laughs> two on the bottom. Well, that's interesting. Um, problem is they have Bolt. And I don't really want to discard two of my cards to save it. When I ship a grave. Because if the Falaji hits Thoughtseize plus big creature, I want to be able to go turn three, uh, untap land, Thoughtseize persist. Now, we did miss on the Thoughtseize, but... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to keep the... Uh... The sewer is just for turn three, because I'm, I'm less likely to hit a Thoughtseize, and if I don't mill a creature off the Falaji, then I want the sewers to potentially find another creature. Yeah, see, this is like worst case scenario. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. If they bolt, I will save it, I think, right? Kind of have to. Yeah, I'm just going to save it. My hand sucks. Might as well, right? <laughs> yeah, very persistent hand. You don't have second bolt, do you? There's no way. There's no way you have second bolt. Okay, I like that. How did the modified Boros Convoke deck perform today? It was okay. Definitely needs a little bit of work, but I think the changes we've made have been good so far. I do I do like the changes. Ajani, honestly, what's kind of weird is that Ajani felt like the most underperforming card for me. And I think the uh the big issue with Ajani in in that deck is that there's no removal so you can't flip it yourself i think that's that's a big issue for me so it's a bit awkward it kind of had like a similar problem <laughs> am i doing this quads by the way there's, there's no way that's the right play i mean we just can't win this game at this point uh what was i gonna say what was we talking about we're talking what were we talking about oh it almost had the same problem as Ocelot Pride, where my issue, I played a league off stream with Ocelot Pride in the Boros Convoke deck, and the problem with Pride was that when you don't have removal to clear the way for it, it was really bad. And it's like kind of sort of the same thing with the Johnny, you know. Nihil Sand, thank you for the two month resub. Appreciate that. I mean, honestly, their hand is Snap Delta. It's holding Preordain Flame. I might just do it now. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's an 01 frog. We have to discard a card just to hit them with it. Oh, come on. If I flare this, they just go land snap flame and I can't win. Uh, What is my out? I mean, I, I guess I make them fight over it. I think my only out is like find fetch, find surveil land, surveil archon, persist archon, or... Indulgence into Land Archon. Something like that. Okay. Well, now that they have Snap Counter Spell, we just can't win this game. Alright. I'm good. I'm good. That was really unfortunate. That match, that, that feels like it should be a good matchup, but... Their draw was very, very good. And uh, we drew four persists. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. That is That is how it goes... Sometimes you draw four copies of Persist. GG's. GG's Van Zandt. I don't think I could sculpt worse draws than the draws that I had that last game. They were really bad. In case you were wondering, I did have the fourth copy of Persist in my hand. With no targets. Oh, nice Thoughtseize, by the way. Okay, well. 
bags. I mean, the one that, the one good thing about my hand is it is very Thoughtsy's resilient because I have two copies of the best card. So they did take one frog. Uno froge. Just gonna get basic, I think. Isla. All right, frog mate. What's funny about this is if we draw a large creature, we can discard it and then have two targets for victimize. Which is kind of cool. I think I like this more than the scam version, just because uh, that's really bad. The reason I, I was going to say, I like this more because it has a lot more upside. Like turn one, you know, Heatron Crab, which we've done a couple of times. Turn one Crab, turn two, Fetch Land Persist with Counterspell Backup. Like those draws are impossible to lose. I mean, I I don't have an, an answer to Dothy Voidwalker in my deck, right? So I should just go all in at this point. Let me look at my deck list. Can I defeat Dothy Voidwalker? No. <laughs> the answer is no, so I should just go all in, right? Or at least discard the two non the two uh the two spells. We kinda have to. It's just it's our only out. We don't have a single way to beat Dothy. This deck kinda needs Fatal Bush. And also, we can't ever win if we draw an Archon of Cruelty, because they're just gonna they're just gonna thought tease it. So we have to hope to never ever draw Archon. Honestly, I think it might be right to just discard all of our lands too. Uh, like I'm not even joking. This looks weird, but like, I just don't know how else we're beating this. I guess if this was my plan, I should have discarded the Catacombs last turn to have an extra card in the graveyard. It's probably more relevant to discard that to the frog than play it. I guess keeping a third land for force is maybe relevant. There's a chance they just can't beat this frog, though. We know one of their cards is Thoughtseize. So now they go to 11. This is a two-turn clock. I mean, obviously, if they ever draw Fatal Push, we lose, but... They just don't have it? <laughs> okay, hold, 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 hold. Just in case they're Necro, I'm going to discard this Victimize. I mean, they can't do anything with the Victimize, right? We just need to not draw Archon. Okay, that's fine. Even if they even if they cast that, it's okay. We can just give Flying and win, so... I don't really care if they Dothy this. It's not Archon. Or Sarah's Emissary, which would also be bad. Hold. Hold. Mad Hatter, you will simply not draw a Fatal Bush, I believe. Hold. Hold. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, Frog is so busted. What a sick card. Easiest game of my life. So what are we boarding in against? Black White Scam. Well, Black White Dothy Thoughtsies. We don't know the, the, comp the, the actual composition of their deck. Yeah, it's got to be Deluge, right? It's like a only good answer to it. I guess subtlety too, but I think I'd rather have Deluge. Could see it. It's not unreasonable, right? Because, like, if they're black white necro, they probably have to play a lot of dual lands and less basics. Now, we don't know if they're playing necro or not. We didn't see enough cards out of them. But they only showed us two dual lands. I'm at least doing this. Uh, I, I could just cut the emissaries too. What if we did two emissaries for two harbingers and then have only Archon as our big creature? Can maybe trim on one crab and keep like I guess the Terastodon is still good because it blows up Necro. Like that could be relevant. Let's try this. That's a good point too. Less big creatures is, is better against Dothy. I think this hand's a definite keep, right? Just like how how Frog soloed them last game. Now obviously I don't expect that always to happen, because they mulled the five that game. So that's like maybe a you know a pretty uncommon scenario. What do they take here? They might just take my own Thoughtseize. I feel like that one would kind of make a little bit of sense. It kind of depends on what their hand is, too. But, like, if they're trying to set up for a Necro, they probably should definitely take Thoughtseize. Well... It's a good draw if they don't have exactly Dothy Voidwalker next turn. Stupid fly. Or, if they play Dothy, we can mill a, uh... We can mill an Archon. Imagine that. Uh, I could not care less about that. Ooh. 
do not have a second land. It's probably worth keeping that, right? We kind of have everything else rolled up. I mean, I guess keeping that might be bad if they have a discard spell for my persist. Because I would like, I would rather try to dig for a second persist, but kind of okay with that. They also kept a one lander and didn't play bobble, which means they drew bobble for turn. But like, if they're willing to keep a one land hand with Thoughties, they probably have at least Dothie in hand. I'm wondering if they also have Nihil Spellbomb. That could kind of make sense, right? As to why they would keep a one lander, or they're just going to get blasted. Now, in their defense, they don't know we drew the Archon, so. Uh, am I getting baited? Oh, they could have Surgical, I guess, yeah. I guess that's a reason to not block and discard the Archon. Because I could draw Thoughtseize, and Thoughtseize before discarding. I'll just take this. Yeah, Surgical would make a lot of sense. It also would make sense as to why they took the Thoughtseize. Mm. So, do we even go for it? Yeah, we could hit Seize off of Archaeologist. The problem with that line is if we hit Thoughtseize off Archaeologist, but also Mill Second Archon, that it's still bad. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. But, like, what do I discard at that point? I guess we might as well attack first, right? Yeah, attack first is almost certainly better. Because I don't think they're ever blocking here. They did block. I mean, what if I just discard... What if I discard Deluge Frog and play Falaji? Or even... Yeah, you know what? Okay, hold on. What if I, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna discard I'm gonna discard Falaji Deluge. And then I'm just gonna cast the persist. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna do this. And then even if they have surgical, we can just exile the Archon to the frog. And it's like kinda fine. Oh. Well. Okay, now if they have surgical, this is really bad. <laughs> Cause I should have just done this before combat. Well, in my defense, even if I had done it before combat. Well, now I just deluge, right? Yeah, now we just deluge. I don't even care for four. Yeah, now we definitely deluge. Now we just pass. Explains the attack, though. I don't know if the solitude means I, I don't know if them having the solitude there necessarily means that they don't have surgical. It could. But, like, I don't know if that's a definitive, you know? Now, I'm, I'm still going to go for it, but... I would not be surprised if they had Surgical. Okay, well... <laughs> I guess they don't, but... I should have been for 5 in case of Surgical. Should have been for 5 in case of Surgical. Why does that matter? Oh, because they can pump up the Nether Goyfs. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I was playing around Surgical, I'd do it for one extra. I see what you're saying. Just, like, played around Surgical the whole time, but they never had it. I mean, I think it was fine to make the plays that I did, you know. We at least tried to play around Surgical. Now, it turns out that there was, you know, we really couldn't do it no matter what, but... I'm gonna draw a card, please. Then we can go here. Oh, a Counterspell. Don't mind if I do. Uh, Alright, you can go. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. YouTube, what is up, everybody? We are back here for this little recap. Uh, this deck was sick. I was a really, really big fan of what was going on here. Flare of the Nile with the Graveyard Enablers worked very, very well. You have some very, very explosive starts with Hedron Crab into, like you saw one of those games, Hedron Crab on turn one. Fetch land persist with flare back up on turn two. It's really hard for a lot of decks to beat those draws. Um, the frogs were phenomenal. They really they give you a really good solid backup plan. As far as what the change about this, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I think the sideboard needs a little bit of work. Potentially the emissaries could be something else. Like you could swap around the large creatures, but you still want to play four Archon for sure. 
could also maybe see cutting the fourth victimize. Eight is kind of a lot of reanimation spells, so some small tweaks to be made, but overall, I really, really like this deck, and if you are interested, maybe a little bit of a, a different take on the Esper Gorios deck. You know, there are some differences. Flare of Denial, this deck gets to play. Esper Gorios gets to play Grief and Ephemerate, so a little bit of a difference there, but anyways, enough rambling. If you're watching us on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!